Good morning on this Sunday, November 15th, and welcome to the Georgia Gang. Right now, county election workers across Georgia are counting ballots by hand after the Secretary of State orders the recount. The gloves come flying off in Georgia's two uh, Senate races, and the stakes couldn't be higher as Georgia decides the balance of power and the direction of the country. The news we weren't we were expecting rather, but didn't want to hear. Georgia is back in the red zone when it comes to the coronavirus. Fair and Phil, Janelle and Kathy are joining us as we continue our social distancing. The debate and discussion begin right now. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia gang starts now. As we speak, Georgia elections officials across Georgia are feverishly recounting some 5 million ballots by order of the Secretary of State. Their deadline to finish the presidential recount is midnight Wednesday. This race has national significance, national importance. We follow the process and we understand the significance of this for not just Georgia, but for every single American. Georgia's Secretary of State says his decision had nothing to do with pressure from the Trump campaign. The presidential race in Georgia is close. Joe Biden leads Donald Trump by some 14,000 votes. My office will continue to investigate each and every instance of illegal voting. Double voting, felon voting, people voting out of state. As if this story couldn't get any more interesting, Raffensperger is now in quarantine after his wife tested positive for COVID-19. On Friday, Raffensperger tested negative, so that's good news. Also, this week, both Georgia's Republican senators, David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, demanded for Raffensperger's resignation. Now, Theron and Phil and Kathy, Janelle, though, I want to start with you. Let's talk about um, this call for a resignation from Raffensperger. So, you know, I think it's important to really start with letting people know that I personally feel like we have to separate the professional from the personal. You know, this is not a personal attack against Brad or his administration. This is an attack against the professionalism or the lack thereof when it comes to how they presented this whole election process. You know, um, we have deals going down and things happening as it relates to this Dominion um, software that no one was aware of that has these add-ons that no one was aware of. There was no communication transparency with that. You know, we can talk about the absentee ballots and the signature verification process that wasn't there. I know Insider Advantage um, with, with uh, Phil um, gave us a really good in-depth explanation as to all of the few things that are missing that should have been there that provides, you know, confidence in this election process. And so that's where this is coming from. You know, I think it's important to just make sure we understand that it's not a personal attack. It's not creating, you know, this infighting inside. It's just basically saying that as it relates to the professionalism that came from the Secretary of State office around this election process, it's just it's just kind of been lacking. And so, um, you know, that's where our senators stand and they're showing that they're standing with the people. You know, there's a lot of people who feel that way and are just not confident in what took place. Kathy, over to you. I assume you disagree with Janelle. Your thoughts on a call for Raffensperger to resign. I mean, given the number of voters and the relatively few issues, I think a lot of people were saying this was a, a well-run election here in Georgia, but that's not the case for some hardcore conservative Republicans. Well, that's right. And just look to the, the fact that the governor, the lieutenant governor, the speaker and others have all been silent on this issue. Apparently they think it's being run fairly well. My client, Fair Fight Action, probably would have preferred that the senators were calling for the resignation after the primaries. That was an absolute disaster and landed us, on, you know, on the front page of every newspaper in the world. Um, so I, I think this this is politically motivated. I think it's unfortunate that Raffensperger caved in it. I'm sure we'll talk a little bit later about uh, what what's actually going on on the ground. Um, but none of the things that Janelle mentioned have been substantiated as problems. And what we'll see at the end of this is that nothing happened. We've subjected people to an awful lot of anxiety, and Joe Biden will be declared the winner Phil, in Georgia and in the country. Kathy mentioned what's going on in the ground. Let's talk about this. I mean, the Republican family is clearly fighting. Um, let's talk about the call for a hand recount, something that couldn't be done for the past couple of decades because of the electronic voting machines. Explain exactly how will this work, and do you agree with this call for a hand recount? 
Well, I will say that I like the fact that it's not just a recount, Lori, it's also an audit. And that means you can kick out votes that aren't legal, and that's what's going to happen. We've talked uh, previously on this show about double voting. You know, they found over 2,000 double votes in the June primary that were kicked out. Uh, you'd mentioned that Trump is down 14,000, supposedly, from Biden. Um, we're looking at a, a list of dead voters. Uh, you should have seen some of the dead voters that uh, we found in Georgia already. They're going to be kicked out. And, of course, uh, and Janelle brought up some of this. I, I really strangely object to what Kathy is saying. There are vi verifiable instances of fraud here. There, there's fraud in every election. I mean, my goodness, have, have you all remembered Fulton County? How do you forget Fulton County? Democrats, independents. Independents and Republicans will tell you there's always problems in Fulton and DeKalb and Richmond and some other areas. In fact, there's a lawsuit now in federal district court in the Southern District targeting eight Democrat counties for verifiable evidences of fraud. So stay tuned for that one. You don't read much about that in the Atlanta media. But uh, basically what's happening is we need to see exactly where the count is in these counties. I don't know why Secretary Raffensperger said they had to finish by Wednesday. You know, darn, all of us on the panel know Fulton County is never going to finish by Wednesday where he pulled that date out is is mystifying and that's why a lot of people are upset with Raffensperger. Theron, I know you have been patiently waiting to respond. Raffensperger said he did not give in to pressure from the Trump campaign but I mean do you think that this hand recount will change anything? Well the, the fact of the matter is Lori is that Donald Trump is about to lose his job. And so one of the things that's very unfortunate, and I want to thank the hundreds of people in these counties that are going to have to go back out and count roughly, you know, five million votes by hand. And so I want to thank them for doing that. But this is going to be a tremendous financial burden on counties. Uh, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. And, you know, Lori, the Republicans that I knew in Georgia for the last three, th three decades, they never supported unfunded mandates, right? They always said during the Democratic days that there was something that wanted to be done. It was an unfunded mandate. And so I think it's very unfortunate that Secretary Raffensperger, who, by the way, I don't always agree with, but I do uh, agree with him on this, is that I think that it's been very unfair to really bully this guy into trying to resign just because you don't like the results of the election. The fact of the matter is, is that not only did Secretary Raffensperger come out during the recount, I mean, during the counting of the votes and encourage the public to attend, but, Lori, this week he even encouraged counties to live stream the recount. And so he is definitely being as transparent as he possibly can. But ultimately, this is unnecessary. Um, this is nothing but Republicans uh, knowing what I already knew and what Kathy knew, and that is that Georgia was going to be blue. And more importantly, I think this is going to backfire because they're putting a tremendous amount of burden on these counties that are going to spend millions of taxpayers' dollars to do a baseless recount just because they don't like the election uh, outcome. Janelle, I want you to respond to Theron. And, you know, he classified, you know, Kelly Leffler and, and David Perdue as bullying Secretary Raffensperger. Your thoughts on this? I mean, this this comes from someone, and I'm sorry, there, and I have to push back on this. Like, this comes from someone who supported, you know, their leader, which is Stacey Abrams, who, might I add, has still hasn't conceded to Governor Kemp. I mean, she's still going on tours claiming to be the real governor. So I think that it's really interesting now that, you know, the, the shoe's on the other foot, that we have Democrats that are saying, oh, my goodness, the election process is so great. It's so transparent. I don't understand why anyone's questioning anything. When we have um, a state Stacey Abrams, who still hasn't conceded to Brian Kemp. I mean, let's. How about we put the put the main thing, the main things that we know that there are times where there is um, election fraud, voter fraud, voter suppression, however you want to call it, whatever it is. We know that that happens, and so now that the race is so close. I'm one of those people who believe that you should play the game until the clock runs out. And that is what's happening. And it's OK. And this is what we're supposed to do. Theron, let me ha let you have the last Laura, word on this, because okay, let me tell ahead. you something. You know, my daughter plays yeah. competitive soccer. Sometimes she doesn't like the outcome of the game, but she knows that sometimes the referee misses calls. Maybe she doesn't like the process, but she knows there's a winner and a loser. Are we ever going to get back to this point where we just accept the results and concede when we lose? 
Well, we have to accept the results. And, 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 and uh, I have to push back on Janelle that, yeah, okay, you know what? The game is not over until the game is over. But we're talking about 14,000 votes. If you guys are telling me that there's evidence out there that it was such massive voter fraud that's going to overturn the election outcome and where we are right now, then present the information. That's all we're really asking for. It, it, it is being presented. Theron, it is being, it is being not, presented. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Okay. It, it is. is. Being it's presented. not about okay, being but, massive but, but where voter is it? fraud. Th so this is the problem. Okay, it's but, but here's the bottom line. No, let Theron finish. Fraud. Let Theron finish. It's about, it's about finish. election integrity. <laughs> Janelle, I need you to let Theron finish, please. No, it's, it's okay, Lori. This is the difference on the show now. When Democrats are in power and we're blue, you know, the Republicans start attacking me. So I've been there before. It's okay. All I'm saying is this. No, no one is basically saying <laughs> that we should not finish counting the votes in Georgia. We should have a fair... Uh, count in Georgia. But what we're also saying is is that you can't bully this man. And by the way, none of us have basically offered him a speedy recovery. So I want to start by doing that in the true spirit of bipartisanship. Not only his wife, but I hope that he's able to get through this. But he has come out and along with his spokesperson saying that they have not seen any irregularities, no discrepancies, no voter fraud. And so none of us on this panel are Secretary of State representatives. So until you present me with the evidence to show this voter fraud, uh, these irregularities, then okay. I'm not going to believe that it occurred. But we, we want to get this count over so the country and Georgia can move on. we got to get out. And just one, one more reminder, Secretary Raffensperger himself has tested negative so far. His wife is positive. All right, we're moving on. Coming up, the money is flowing into Georgia as voters here will decide the balance of power in the U.S. Senate. Have a question or comment for the Georgia Gang? Email them at georgiagang at foxtv.com. The latest polls in Georgia's two U.S. Senate races show these races are as tight as both Republicans and Democrats start hurling the attacks. Farron, we'll start with you. Not that we can believe the polling anymore, but do you expect to see such a robust absentee mail-in turnout by Democrats in the runoff? Yes, and I think we will continue to not only encourage people to legally vote absentee or do a mail-in ballot, but we also will encourage folks to vote early. And more importantly, um, what I like to hear, Lori, is that absentee ballots are going to start going out in the state of Georgia uh, on November 18th. And so um, both candidates on the Democratic side running for U.S. Senate are going to be well-funded. Uh, I like what I'm seeing from both candidates, particularly Reverend Warnock, who's already coming up with some proactive ads uh, that I think are very humorous and very effective. And also John Ossoff is taking it all around the state. He's doing a tour where he's going to different counties, speaking and basically calling on David Perdue uh, to debate him three times or more in this upcoming runoff. So I feel real good at where we are right now. Phil, this week John Ossoff said the fact that Senators Perdue and Leffler called for the resignation of the Republican Secretary of State, it just shows how the GOP is in disarray and in the fight of their lives. Does he have a point? <laughs> No, he doesn't, and uh, he's struggling. Remember that uh, Ossoff uh, went way below Purdue uh, in the first round, and that Purdue actually outperformed President Trump. And so he's struggling. He's obviously going to attack. I think, uh, going back to the last segment, that uh, there's valid criticism of Secretary Raffensperger, and we've outlined some of that. Theron hasn't been uh, following the uh, lawsuits that are going on, including the one I mentioned in the last segment. There's documented evidence of, uh, of voter fraud, and he keeps claiming, you know, count every vote. Well, yeah, we need to audit every vote, too. And I'm sorry, Theron, but illegal votes are going to be kicked out just like they were in June in the primary. And that's what we do here. And I don't think that um, it's just Republicans uh, that are involved here. I think moderates and independents and Democrats uh, want to have uh, clean elections here. So I, I think uh, Raffensperger deserves some of this criticism. It's not going to hurt uh, Leffler or Purdue at all. In fact, they're talking about how the Democrats want to change America and defund the police and uh, have the Green New Deal that's expensive. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a great contrast. Kathy, that's what I want to focus on. We know the strategy now of the Leffler campaign. To no one's surprise, she's saying if Warnock wins, it will lead to a takeover of the radical left, just like Phil had said. This week, Senator Chuck Schumer said, first we win Georgia and then we change America. That's now being used in a GOP ad. What kind of change is Chuck Schumer referring to and will it jive with Georgia voters? 
Well, I think it will. I think that Georgia voters are very, very concerned about COVID-19 and the devastating impact it's had on this state and this country and the fact that, you know, nine months later, we still don't have a national strategy for bringing it under control. We've got people all over the state of Georgia, I think 1.5 million people right now that don't have health insurance. And we've got uh, two Senate senators that consistently try to undermine the ability of people to get health insurance. And we've got an economy that is still struggling, and we have Mitch McConnell in the Senate failing to allow a vote on any kind of stimulus package that can help people move ahead and pay their bills and and find some semblance of economic stability. People need to see that happen, uh, and right now we're playing politics. We have two senators that are still playing, you know, representing Trump on the battlefield and not representing Georgia voters, and that's what people desperately need, and they're going to be taking a hard look at these two Democratic Senate candidates, and I hope they'll swing that way, and I think that independents in particular uh, will be looking for something that will help us get this country going in one direction again. Janelle, last word in this block, are these two U.S. senators Senator Perdue and Leffler, are they um, supporting Donald Trump instead of Georgia voters, as Kathy alluded to? No, they're supporting Georgia voters and they always have supported Georgia, Georgia voters. You know, I feel like it's simple. You know, I feel like this is a freedom in American dream versus dictatorship and just uh, just taking over and making sure that you're answering to one party. It's a simple decision to make. Um, it, it's not it's clear that, you know, when you have both senators basically telling Georgians that this is a very, very important election and it determines whether or not we have checks and balances um, in our government. That's, that is the story. That is exactly what it is. That's not a narrative. That's exactly what we're facing. And you hear it all the time. And what Schumer said, I mean, it would be okay if only we didn't already know what his plan was for America. And when you have things like the Green New Deal, defunding the police, and all these other radical agendas that's on the table, if that's what he sees as the new America, then no, I don't think anyone, regardless of your party affiliation, is really, a, really for that, unless you're that small group of pro- progressives who are really pushing for this radical side of things. But I know that there's dysfunction in the Democratic Party as well over that talk, those talking points. So I don't think that, that is a, a, that's productive for the Democratic Party. And it, yes, it has to be the message of the Republican Party because it's the message of America right now. Theron, one last question, because I thought Janelle brought up a really good point about this system of checks and balances. How do Democrats respond? Because a lot of voters are comfortable with how our democracy was set up with a system of checks and balances. Well, again, newsflash for our listeners and the panel. I mean, we're winning Georgia, and we're going to win Georgia, and we're going to win the White House. You are going to see a Biden-Harris uh, presidential and vice president, uh, presidential administration. However, Lori, you know, I call balls and strikes. There were a lot of moderate, disaffected Republicans and independents who voted for Joe Biden around the country and probably voted for him here, here in the state of Georgia, but probably went the other way when it came to the U.S. Senate because most Americans feel like no one party should have all that control. That is our goal as at both parties to try to win as many elections as we can. And so this whole notion that we need somebody to check and balance the uh, Biden-Harris administration is, is the only thing that the Republic- Republicans can talk about because they're losing right now. But I do believe that the Biden-Harris uh, administration is going to be able to work in a bipartisan manner. And then all this stuff about the new Green Deal and uh, defunding the police, these are okay. just recycled re- Republican talking points, but the country is really trying to move uh, beyond that. We got to yeah. leave it there. And I know we'll revisit. It's Janelle, I promise you, next week. (laughs) Coming up, it was bound to happen. Georgia back in the red zone when it comes to our coronavirus cases. Join the discussion on the Georgia Gang Facebook page and watch past episodes on the Georgia Gang YouTube channel. Citing our case numbers, the president's coronavirus task force shifted us back to the red zone, the most severe category when it comes to disease spread. Janelle, I want to start with you. Thanksgiving is just a couple of weeks away and the numbers are bound to get worse, yet we know new treatments and a possible vaccine are on the horizon. We've seen some other states take some extra steps to prevent the spread. What do you think should happen here? 
Well, you know, I do think that a lot of people get nervous when they see increased numbers. I naturally start thinking about the fact that we're having increased testing, um, which would mean increased numbers. Um, I'm really looking at hospitalizations and the death toll um, and making sure that that doesn't begin to severely spike. Um, and that's something that I'm really paying attention to. But one of the things I do, we do know, and I know you mentioned that the vaccine is near and it's, it's really close. Um, I would like to see a poll done in, th throughout the nation as to how many people would be first in line to get the vaccine because I find it very interesting when I talk to people like directly a lot of people are not wanting to get the vaccine um, immediately so you know it kind of puts you in a position where it's like if we're going to try to maintain this virus and the vaccine is supposed to be the answer but a lot of people don't want to get it then what do we do so some of what we're doing right now by fi fighting it and facing it head on is probably the best decision that we can make at this point. And I'll say it, wear a mask. <laughs> um, Kathy, I want to go back to Absolutely. some post-election news. Gwinnett District Attorney Danny Porter, a Republican, said this really wasn't about him when he lost. Um, rather that it was the party. Um, we saw this also happen in Cobb County, the district attorney there. It's a good point because I think Danny Porter has really had a solid reputation for decades. Well, we saw... Uh, quite a few uh, Republican DAs lose their election or all over the state, including Jackie Johnson down in Brunswick, who mishandled the Ahmaud Arbery case. Um, and so I think what was really interesting, and I haven't been able to see vote breakdowns, but voters picked and choose you chose uh, who they wanted all through the ballot from the top to the bottom. Uh, and in, in terms of DAs, people are looking very, very carefully at the record of racial justice, at, at um, handling cases that come before them. And, and voters very clearly said, and it must have been you know at least some bipartisan action because of the way that the state is split, uh, that they wanted to see a different kind of DA now. All right, back um, to Phil. I want to ask you, what did you make of the loss of Bob Trammell's seat in Luthersville? The House Minority Leader reportedly choked back tears when addressing the caucus. Talk about the two Georgias that are really at play here. I want to go to Phil and then Theron quickly. There are two Georgias, and one is the Metro Atlanta counties, 29 of them, and then there's outside Metro Atlanta, 130 counties, and it goes to the polarization of the parties that we're talking about. If somebody has an R sometimes against their name, then they're going to get it in certain counties, and the same with D. Uh, and of course, the Democrats are packed into uh, to Metro Atlanta. I, uh, I've always opposed partisan labels on sheriffs and district attorneys. Uh, they're supposed to uh, adhere to the law, and so I would hope that that would be happening in the future. But basically, I, I think what's going to happen, too, is the Democrats did very poorly when it came, for example, to the State House of Representatives. Bob Trammell lost, Lori, as you point out, their, their leader, but they, they failed to get any traction at all, and uh, that's bad for the Democrat grassroots. Theron, last word. I've got a few seconds left. Yeah, it's fake news from Phil. Uh, Democrats were able to pick up two That's seats true. in the House and was able to pick up a state Senate seat. Uh, so to say that we didn't do anything at all, again, it's just false. Uh, but listen, leader Bob Trammell is going to be missed. I mean, he was an outstanding leader in the caucus. And, and Lori got along very well with a lot of Republicans. Um, you know, being from the University of Georgia, he was able to build upon a lot of different coalitions in the House. And so he's definitely going to be missed. Uh, but I think we'll be fine and we'll have some good leaders that are going to come behind him. All right. I agree with you. He's got a great reputation as well. Thank you, Theron, and thank you all. Coming up, we'll have winners and losers. Stay tuned. Time now for the week's winners and losers. Another packed show. You guys each have about 30 seconds, so Phil, we'll start with you. Well, let me do uh, my winners. It was Veterans Day last Wednesday, so I want to make winners all the veterans who serve their country. And I want to give uh, a special shout out to my American Legion Post 29 in Marietta. Uh, they do a lot of great charity work. So many thanks to Commander Walt, uh, T-Bell, Sarah, and all of my patriots and friends at that uh, Legion Post and, uh, and their work. Oh, great points, Phil. Thank you. Theron, over to you. All right, Gwinnett County, Cobb County, Henry County elected their first black sheriffs in this election. So I want to give a big shout out to Kibo Taylor, Craig Owens, and Reginald Skandrick. And also in the spirit of Masters <laughs> Week, uh, I want to give a big shout out to the Masters. They announced that Lee Elder, the first black man to ever play at Augusta National in 1975, will be an honorary uh, uh, 
uh, person with uh, Jack Nicholson and also um, uh, Gary Player. And also want to give a big shout out to Payne College who they're going to be giving a scholarship to uh, not only have players play, but they're going to help them create their first golf uh, women's team. And they recently got their full accreditation. So give a big shout out to these two organizations. That's great. And Theron, you know I love props, so thank you. <laughs> All right, Janelle, over to you. Yeah, just a big shout out to um, my rural Republicans. I know we talked about that in the last segment, but I really want to give a big shout out to them um, just for pushing forward and saving democracy here in Georgia for the most part as we're continuing to count. Um, and I also wanted to encourage everyone who's contacted me and who wants to help um, both our U.S. Senators, David Perdue and Kelly Leffler, um, to just go on their page and sign up to be a volunteer. Um, we need all hands on deck. I'm seeing a lot of yard signs for both parties, so... Here we go. <laughs> All right, Kathy, final final winners and losers for hey, you. I'm good. I'm going to make a Republican a winner this week, and that's Cobb Commission Chairman Mike Boyce for the gracious response that he had to losing to incoming Commissioner Lisa Cupid. We're delighted to see her there as Democrats, but he did a great job and called on national and state leaders to accept the will of the voters and move on, and that's the way it should be done, folks. Um, so I guess that's it. I guess that's all the time I have. All right, you could have popped in a loser if you wanted one. <laughs> That's okay. All right. All right. We'll leave it there and let it be known that Kathy actually made a Republican this week a winner. So that's that's history right there, folks. Thank you all so much for joining us. And thank you. A shout out also to the veterans and also to Masters in November. It'll be interesting. No azaleas, I guess. But still, the tradition continues. Thank you all. We will see you again that's next right. week. Bye bye. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program.